this is Shokarezo Hikyoku, aka Triple Mint, and welcome back to our let's play of Eorza Major, an alchemy story. In the last section, we have seen the domestic life of these two, our two protagonists, and how cute they were, with cooking, working, and so on. And they are getting together, getting closer and closer. So I was wondering, what will happen next? Let's continue. Have you any new cooking box? Not at the moment, but once this job's done, I can get right on it. You put in an order, Yorja. Yes. And if you got any sharper knives, mine are rusting. I'll pay you back next time I have fine locks on them. The old smith waved me out with the knives and a good nature browse. I continue on. Hmm. This is rosemary, isn't it? I'll take a couple bunches. Sure it is. Cooking yourself? Never saw you getting anything fancier than carrots and potatoes. Hmm, just running errands. The vegetable seller winked at me. Well, I hear cooks and those who spend time in the kitchens like a bit of appreciating now and then. How about getting a treat? Something nice, maybe. The bundle of violets and crocuses she waved at bloomed colorfully at me. Well, then again, she is she is selling stuff, so this is a good kind of sell for her. Wait, where? Normally, I would have considered them as strangers, but I knew Urbo is was fond of flowers. I'll take them then. Good choice. Oh, they're on the house. Gone. You need a bit of a color in your life and potential lover. So do your best. <laughs> Glad to see you looking brighter these days, though. Ah, uh, yes. What's I? I'm home. Welcome back. Hmm, here. Oh, the rosemary. And basil and thyme, the whole set. Says that'll be useful for a good cook. I figure I might as well. And uh, got a couple of new knives. As I unloaded my haul, I handed her about the flowers as well. And was gratified to see the way he filmed at them. Oh goodness, Yersa, thank you. You have really thought of everything. This I could do. I no longer return to an empty cabin and a cold hurt after my rounds each day. No matter how late I returned, there would be light in the house, and Uribel smiled to greet me over a warm meal. It had only been a week since Uribel began cooking for me. But this routine had already become part of my all lives. It really was nice. Though as Uribel was showing me how to crush the rosemary to draw out flavor, there came a knock on the door. Hmm? I'll get it. If it's a patient, should I tell them to come back later? Oh, well, dinner will be ready soon. Please ask them if they would like to stay. The horrible aroma of rosemary and potato soup rose behind me as I went to the door. The visitor was familiar, Grumman, who had taken up work at the general's shop in Ridholm. I suddenly remembered handing his daughter a doll. That had been right after I returned with Urbel. Had it already been a few weeks? 
You look well, Yersa. You as well. Back to visit family. Sure am. Got a small break from hauling around the countryside with Americans, so here I am. Come in, then. We have soup on the stove. Oh no! I gotta get back to the missus soon. She'll kill me if I aren't at her table first time I come back in a month. But damn, it's been a wee while if you already taken a husband yet. <coughs> 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 He, <laughs> I was momentarily lost for words. Grumman roared with laughter. <laughs> Sorry, you ain't gonna explain, but great, that ain't what I came to chat with you for. You're about the diamond issues the other vegetarians were having, right? Yes. Any news? Good old on the front, actually. Seems like there ain't been any attacks for a while now on Brookhaven or Belleville. Belleville. Brookhaven was a large hamlet three days walk away. Drive by the river had them um, prosper where Super Bell, landlocked in a valley, couldn't. I record that Brookhaven had been one of the first villages to be attacked by Diamond, and then Belleville. That is good news. Then the attacks may be over. Could be, could be. But if it ain't one thing, it's another. Some of the folks I passed on the road said they saw bandits. Says they've been hanging around near Reed Home, but others said they were wandering in this direction. Hmm. There was little else in this direction of Reed Home besides Silver Bell. That was a disquieting thought, but Brahman didn't seem to know much more than that about the bandits. So we chat about swamp things for a moment further. Anyway, before I forget, here apples are looking after my cat. She told me about the door and all. It's not necessary. Oh come on! What am I gonna do with this many apples? The missus told me to go hang him out. Also, the the forget. I don't know if that was a uh, typo or if it is a uh, an accent. <laughs> Gonna make a good fight for you and your man. Well, good hunting. I returned with a small basket of apples as Uribel was setting the table, and told him about Roman's visit. We sat down to eat, but though the soup was delicious, I couldn't shake a feeling of unease. Yersa, something on your mind? Eh. Uribel smiled at me, seemingly unaware. I hesitated for a moment. Have you seen or heard of anything odd around the village? Unknown travelers, strange injuries, the like. No, nothing of the sort. Why do you ask? Bandit sightings. Not sure if their goal is Silver Vale, but keep an eye out. I will, but ah,、uh, may I ask why? I have heard of bandits before, but could not ask why others seem to fear them so. Ah, that's right. I suppose, given what I knew of the Ishim lamps, Ishim, 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 Ishim wouldn't even have had a concept of criminals or hurting others. The shirt of it is the robbers and murderers. They'll hunt other people for money or just for fun. Is that? But why? I know you have told me that the creatures of this world can be violent. I suppose I can understand a little if they must survive. But how could humans willingly harm others of their own kind for sport? Perhaps there are disagreements, but even if you are not lunged by the plants, you all share your existence as humanity. Hmm. <sighs> 
That's just the way humans are. I can't really explain it. Is that so? Thinking about it, Super Bell had been peaceful ever since Uri Bell and I returned. So our encounter with the wolves and Uri Bell's difficulty accepting that living beings could harm each other hadn't come up again. Now that I understood him better and had seen his kindness and patience with even difficult patients, I didn't want to call his just a nature of law, but it did make him somewhat vulnerable. Either way, you should keep an eye out. Do not trust all humans blindly. All right. And somehow, I still didn't feel satisfied with that. Hmm. Actually. I'll go with you to see patients around town for a few days. I'll say it without even realizing. Uribel also looked surprised, but not as much as I felt. Will you really? But it's your work. It's fine. Oh, Jesus, Jesus! You shouldn't go along. Not much work these days. Sounds like a lie. Not much work these days. Sounds like a lie. So you shouldn't go home alone. I don't want to leave you on your own. And also sharing feelings is also a good thing, especially if it's worry or something like that. <laughs> or well, she could be kind of like embarrassed with showing her feelings, and that's our indirect way. But then, then uh, Uribo might not read between the lines, so yeah, gonna be straightforward. Oh, 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 oh that flush, that flush. <laughs> It's just for safety. You should have someone else around for a bit. My work will fit around it, but if it's not too, if it's too much trouble. No, I, I would be glad for your company. Thank you, Yarsa. Hmm. Aribel was far too trusting and needed someone to watch out for him if bandits were about. That was my role as his bonder. I looked at his smile over our meal and wondered for a moment whether that was really how it was. I wonder. <laughs> Da, oh, da, thanks for that. Well, what you did? My young Megan killed me for the first time in years. I don't know, and don't make case either. I am very glad to hear it. I hope you two will have more peaceful days. Da, and you certainly wouldn't believe what that girl Mons got up to these days. Uh, she really? Oh my! Oh, you're so. Here, I got a couple twists fresh from the oven for the two of you. I had not been around the village with Urbel for a couple weeks, but the number of people who recognized him and came to chat with us was astonishing. Besides Hughley, they all seemed to have a story or an event to tell him. And he seemed to be interested in all of them. And I realized I was glad to see him so welcomed by the village. He would have no trouble as long as he was here. Perhaps I had a need to worry about him being alone after all. But why had I been so worried about him? Why had you? <laughs> Honestly, I just wish that girl settled down as happily as you two have. Uh, hold on. What? Get back to the dome. Take care now. You hear? I missed the conversation, but the baker was bustling up already. Uribel smiled at me, seemingly unaware. She has been just been saying, "Our daughter is a kind young man, woman with many young men competing for her attention." 
It sounds as if she cannot decide between them. In matters of romantic love, as I understand. Huh. And there is a question of who she will take to the festival at the end of the season. It sounds quite complex. Oh. I've forgotten about the Harvest Festival. Old Marcia had also mentioned it earlier, but it would be coming up. But it wasn't something that I needed to think about. Although, Yersa, Marcia told me a little of promise earlier, but this is something I am still not sure I truly understand. Is it? Difficult for humans to find those they romantically love. Hmm, it's complicated. How so? Is it not simply caring for someone else very deeply? It's more than that. I hadn't thought about it in many years at this point, but I didn't want to just refuse Uribe's curiosity. A sign. Love is wanting to be special to someone. Loving someone means wanting the best for them, but also wanting to share a life with them, help them in all they do, and care for them more than yourself. That is what the ideal love is, but both people must feel that way towards one another. It's difficult. If one person cares more and the other does not, well. That's why. Ah,、uh, I see. But well, thank you for explaining, Yersa. Ariba looked a little dejected at that explanation. It does seem that humans truly value love, and the people I have seen together look quite happy. So, it is a blessing to have if it can be attained. Hmm. Have you also wished for it yourself? <sighs> you don't walk around with a cute girl and these ugly old men, you know. Why can't you just act more like a normal girl and leave it to? No, not really. It was a lie, but before Uribel could notice, we were interrupted by the sound of Jip. Jura and Dickerin, you take that back! I didn't mean it. You said you were carefully done. The boy ran towards Uribel, and the girl followed, holding parts of a broken wooden door toy in hand. Ah,、uh, hold on a moment, you two. Please tell me what has been happening. Aribel bent to speak with them, and after some convincing, I managed to ask the girl to let me see her toy. One of the wooden arms had been snapped off, apparently by accident, while the boy was rock housing. But the wood had been weak. Let me fix it then. I can give it back to you tomorrow. Really? I promised. Okay. I comforted her awkwardly a little more, then looked over towards Uribel, still speaking seriously but gently to the boy. It is not yours, but you know it is not her fault either. Sometimes we do not know and hurt each other, but we must still try to understand.、Mm-hmm. Although I knew how rowdy the boy could be. He was listening seriously. The girl had also stopped crying as she turned back to Uribel. Uribel really was good with Juran. I thought it before, but seeing him jeering them up like this was proof in itself. And from the other townsfolk's words, words, he really was just kind and honest, and someone who could heal hurts as easily as wounds. And maybe that was why. Whether or not I was sworn it as my duty, I simply wanted to protect him. And it is better to be someone who can make the lives of others better, 
Thy ears, ah. Huh? She is kind, cares for others greatly, and fixes what is broken rather than breaking it. Is that not true? Miss Ears said she'll fix my toy too. Yeah, I guess she's cool. Hmm. Arivel smiled at me and continued speaking to them. But it suddenly felt as if I had a cold water splash across my face. Arivel might have been kind and gentle, and believed everyone to be as good as he was. But even if he thought that of me, I've forgotten that I couldn't be that person. It was a couple days later that Uribel mentioned wanting to see the waterfall once again, so we went. Since I'll need to restock my wood ball as well, I had taken my axe along. I had not asked, but there seemed to be many varieties of tree. Is the wood different from each? Yes, not all wood suits all uses. Oak is hard but good for building. Bine is softer and suits charcoal making and you. I showed Uribel some of the differences in leaves and twigs as we walked. Though blend life was not his domain, he listened with fascinated fascination. The quiet of the mountain, the growing rumble of the frogs, and my quiet chatter with Uribel occupy my thoughts. And so neither I nor the three strange men coming by the waterfall noticed each other until Uribel and I walked into the clearing. <sighs> what the? Ears are what? Get back. The rough-looking man had jumped to the feet as I pulled Uribel behind me. The can was haphazard, 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 with bones and rubbish scattered carelessly around about. A strong smell of something rotten hit my nose. But more bracing were the long knives in the hands. In the hands, I could reach the axe on my back quickly, but making a movement now would threaten them. And Uribel was behind me, looking alarmed. I need to be careful. Strange time for a walk with grams, Dolly. We mean no harm. We will leave now. Ah, that's right. Scram if you know what's good for. It. Shut your mouth. You two ain't going nowhere. The other two fell silent. The one in the lead did not take his clear of us. Your hands as empty as a sack. We ain't getting bay if we're seen again. You know what that means. But what does it matter if the place is getting? Shut up. What? Spread out and get up. Slice the crows so they don't make a fuss. <sighs> a little hesitantly, the two other two began circling up towards our left and right. The leader kept an eye on us. Seemingly undecided about how to attack, I had more range with my axe, but it was three against one. I did not think Arabel could fight. I should tell him to run. Please hold on a moment. Oh. Before I could stop him, Arabel stepped in, out in front of me firmly. Arabel, get back! This does not seem necessary. None of us truly want to harm each other. We only wish to see the falls. They are a beautiful sight, aren't they? And inexplicably, the two bandits circling us stopped, looking confused. Yeah, they're sneak. What the hell do you think you're? <clears throat> the flow of water energy. What was he? Water suits. Means and connects all living beings, because we are aware of all connections. Conflict can be calmed. We are different, but we are all alive. You still care for each other, as we do. 
if we can share the gift of life and of the inner sight, then we can understand each other. So, there is no reason to fight. I would be happy to listen to you if you wish to talk. Nothing he was saying could have been persuasive to rock men like these, but the two men to the side were lowering her knives, their knives, and backing away. Boss, let's just get out here. You jackass, get yourselves back! I ain't here to stop a girl and an old man, boss. He looks at my dad. They can do whatever they like. I just needed coin. The leader looked about him wildly. Disbelief at losing control over his man clear on his face. I probably looked just as astonished, but now that Eribo's suiting or whatever it was had brought us a little breathing room. Eribo, if they're leaving, let's go then. Well, all right, then please excuse us. The two men nodded back at him, but the leader. Suddenly, had a knife in his hand. This, this is all you do it, you old bastard! You got a witch! Suddenly, the handle of my axe was in my hand. The bandit raised his arm to cut. Ah! My swing was through. An arm and a knife landed with a dull thud among the rocks by the old falls. The boss, Yursa. If you hurt him at all, the next cut will be your neck. The fallen bandit was scrambling back from me, howling in pain. I slowly became aware of Eribel standing beside me, his expression horrified, but seemingly unharmed. The white hot rage bounding in my ears subsided slowly at that. I drew a breath and lowered my axe. Leave. I pulled Eribel back. After a frozen moment, the other two bandits grabbed the leader and ran, hauling away in the opposite direction of the village. Only their abandoned rubbish pours of blood across the stones, and the arm remained. You're not hurt. I am not, but the tone of Eribel's voice finally pulled me out of my focus on inspecting her for injuries. Yersa, you, how could you do that so easily? There was an expression I did not ever recall seeing on his face, but it was sickeningly, sickeningly familiar. The fire in my chest burned suddenly cold. He was attacking you, but that does not. You could not have hurt me. The other listened. I felt that they did not wish to fight, even if I couldn't convince him immediately. There must have been a way to understand him. But now, I cannot heal him or reach him. I am a healer. My role is to help and to mend. But the hurt you caused here, I cannot. If you not always care for others, you have always been kind. How could you just? How did? How could you just? Your peace. I see. I didn't want him to hurt you. He tried to kill you. I can't. I won't let happen. Let that happen. Yersa. He could not have done so. I can repair myself. It should not have come to this. This is what humans are like. Humans aren't as good as you think. This word. There's always people, perhaps, who hurt others. They won't listen or understand. The only way to stop them is this. If I need to protect those I care, those I've sworn to, then I'll stop them, whatever it takes. 
My words were steady. I couldn't keep bitterness out of them, nor I could meet Erbo's gaze, where the shock and horror I was familiar with would be. It was all happening again. I'm not kind or good like you think. This is what I do. He hears her. Go back to the village. The backpack should be safe. I'll clean up here. Forcing myself to move with an effort, I turned away from Burybell and walked to the severe arm. The blood around it. I had to clean it up before it contaminated the water. That was what I had to focus on. In the gauntlet the bandit had been wearing, as I looked closer, I found something odd. There was a small vial attached to it, with liquid still remaining. It looked oddly familiar, but I could not recall why. When I finally looked up again, the rebel had gone. For the next two days, I did not see Erebel. Although he continued to look, leave food bombed on the house for me, he did not return to the cabin when I came home in the evenings. And even as I tried my best to focus on my repair works, the folk I helped continued to gossip to me about Erebel. It should have been the usual casual village chatter. I should have been glad to hear how they appreciated him, but it only reminded me of how we've been there together just days ago, and of their empty seats across my table at meal time. On top of that, after I informed the chief of the bandit threat, some of the villagers had tried to thank me. I could not explain to them why I felt no accomplishment in it. All I could do was continue to work. At least I was still wanted for that, if little else. Then, keep it out of the rain next time. You'll last longer. Your lifesaver, Yersa. And give my regards to the doctor, will you? My massages and feels gone for the first time in years, and is this work? Don't know what we'll do without you two around. Mm-hmm. The afternoon sunlight shone harshly in my eyes after the dim cabin. Blinking, it took me a few moments to realize that Arabelle was crossing the weir, the square, surrounded by a small group of rowdy children. We saw each other at about the same time. Although I didn't want to, I couldn't help noticing Erebel's expression. It was not an angry one, but I need your sugar. And the voice, I looked away before his expression could change again. Old Marcia was bustling up to me. It's not that rock and chair my last husband got for me. Has been making the first of a ranking. I can't give me something. Okay, this voice is like I cannot consistently make old people voice, or I can't make old people voice at all. <laughs> I'll go take a look. This needs a new back. The joints are starting to rot off. Well, if that ain't mean at all, it's only been ten years. They sure don't make wood like they used to. And why aren't the watermen? Ah, oh, I suppose it's the dog now. Coming with you. Maybe you can help the wood that he did my plans. For some reason, although I didn't reap response, Marcia didn't chatter on as she usually did. Looking up, I noticed she had one curious eye on me. Your sucker, you ain't gone and have a fight with a man. He is not. We are only. I did not know how to continue that sentence. Marcia just nodded shakily. 
well taken from wisdom, gay. I think they make the heart grow fonder and all, but it ain't good to take it too far, you know. You get close to someone, you gotta bounce right off them once or twice. Just so long as you go back after it's all over. Don't get right, get in the way of what you really want it. <sighs> Three husband and I ain't been wrong yet. You mark my words. So what's the fix for this oracle? The repairs once again took me a while. But I waved up Marcia's offer off a of mule this time. I didn't know what I would say if she dressed me about Urabel again. It wasn't bright, but I just couldn't be the sort of noble and selfless person he would respect. Maybe no human could. So the peaceful days were had, and the hope I'll let myself have never could have lasted. I should just. Huh? What's this? Something was wrong. I could hear voices, and they were coming from the woods. Marcia's home was close to the edge of the village. <coughs> oh wait, no one was. And then I saw them. A few children were running from the woods, stumbling, whose hoots were shouting. The boy and girl in the lead. I had seen them where Arabelle was just a little earlier. I'm gonna kill the dog. Who's Bendis? Did they come back already? Why did I leave Uribel? No, it's there. The diamond. What? I was running in the direction the Juran had came from before I could finish my thought. The underbrush struck at my boots. The twisted branches snapped painfully at my face. But the only thing I could feel was my axe on my back, and the eyes burning in my chest. Why were there diamonds? Why now? And why had I been such a fool? What had I been thinking? After everything I lived for, everything I swore to Uribel, everything he tried to do for me, how could I have been so weak as to give up protecting him? Alright. When the ice breaks, you run. You must run. But, but, but you! I shall not let you come to harm, so. Hurry, Bell! Die! Damn! Please! You will never hurt those I love again! My axe fell, blood splatter, dark and full. White hot fury and burning veins seared me. The claws of the diamond in front of me came away with red with blood. Mine. My stomach was on fire, but it was nothing if I could still squirm my axe. The diamond was slowing, falling. Ears up, watch out! Only Uribel's shout and the crack of ice behind me warned me in time. I spun around. The second diamond's claw, claws, smashed into ice, appearing from nowhere, and cut only into my shoulder rather than my spine. <clears throat> Yours, uh, please. <laughs> Sorry, my 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 battle cry is not that great. My good hand was still strong. My axe fell again. Darkness bloomed against my sleep, and my hands were soaked in hot tar, running red and black. Again. And again. And finally, I saw through a heat of red that the second diamond had stopped moving. 
I stood still in the silent clearing. Over masses of flesh, I had once been two diamond. Something warm coursed down my cheek, and something foul was in my mouth. Blood, the diamonds and mine was everywhere. And this time, Arabelle, standing before me, I seen everything. At least the boy he was protecting has run. At least, only one person will see me like this again. Yersa. She, she slaughtered it. It was a wolf. No woman should have been. A bear in a dress. No one could ever love that. The heat of the blood on me and in me was fading. I could protect Arabel, but I couldn't face him. Not like this. You should leave me be. I turned to leave. I took a few steps, or I thought I did. But then suddenly, the forest burst, and my back hit something rough, and blackness filled my vision. And then, I felt something warm press against my forehead. What, Yersa? I am so sorry. I have been such a fool. Even if you cannot forgive me, please, at least let me do this for you. <sighs> Warmth began to course through me. Life filled my eyelids, and I heard about. Ah, sweetie. Oh, hug, hug. Even though she's like really bloody, but this is a nice hug. The blood was staining his clothes, but his arm still held on to me firmly, and there was a light everywhere. I was wrong about about everything. I had no right. I did not understand this word. I did not know anything about the life you had to live. I judged you cruelly. I hurt you, and I paid the price. I lost you. I will regret it for all my existence. If I lose you again, if you disappear before your time, you must leave. Ersa, please. His voice sounded faint, and then, somewhere in the back of my mind, I realized, Arabel was using up his energy to heal me. If they use too much energy without replenishing it, they will eventually fade back to the plains to recuperate. And an Ishim who had returned to the elemental plants likely can never return to the physical world. Those words resounded in my mind, but I could barely move my body. I wouldn't let him. I would not stop. Yersa, my body was weak. My body was weak. Fire burned everywhere, but for what seemed the first time in days, my mind was clear. Humans can heal themselves too, and I, I am strong. So don't, don't you dare. But I will not lose you either. Silence. The light around us twinkled. Brightly, and then began to fade. And Arabel, as if the tension had drained from him as well, gently collapsed against me. I felt the strain to reach one arm around him. He was tender and warmer than I had imagined. Yersa, I did not realize. Stop it! Don't say anything. Just stay. His arms tightened around me. 
I pull him closer, and finally the other villagers, flushed, fetched by the children, found us both here, bloody and utterly disheveled, but alive. Nice. So they make up. Great. And the chapter six is the festival of harvest, which we will not be doing until the next section. And so, therefore, oh my, that's a new clothing style, looking great. But anyway, this should be the end of our playthrough for today. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time when we see what happens at the Harvest Festival. Will there will they dance? Will their relationship deepen more and more? How exciting! So, bye bye.